everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn a fun new skill, how to sublimate hoodies. You might think they're just like sublimating a t-shirt, but there are some important differences when you're working on sweatshirts, especially if you want to decorate different spots, like the back or the chest or even an arm. I'll show you how to do it all and you'll be customizing hoodies in no time. A hoodie can be the perfect thing on a chilly day or when you want to get extra comfy at home. And it can be even more comforting if the hoodie has exactly the design you want right on it. But if the perfect hoodie and design combination isn't out there, what can you do? Well, if you have sublimation equipment, you can add the design you want where you want it. If you've worked with sublimation transfers before, you know they work best on clothing that is 100% polyester and white because the ink works best on polymers and the ink is translucent so other base colors can impact your results. I found these hoodies that work really, really well for me. I put the link to them below this video for you. And in addition to being white and 100% polyester, they are standard men's hoodies. There are a lot of hoodie styles available, but I found this type easiest to decorate, especially on the front and the sleeve, because the seams at the top and shoulders and where the arms meet the chest. You can use the same sublimation steps on other sweatshirt styles, of course, but you have to experiment with the front design placement to get the look you want. But that's one of the best things about sublimating your own items. You can do whatever you want. I got these at a great price, but it's a good idea to have some simple white polyester fabric like this to try out your designs before committing to the hoodie, right? You don't want to waste your blank. I have both linked in my materials list at jennifermaker.com 561. And then we'll use our usual sublimation tools and materials to add the cute sleep themed animal designs to three spots. So I'm going to show you how to do the back, the chest, and a sleeve. I'm going to use Google Docs to prepare the designs today and then print them with my sublimation printer using sublimation paper by ASUB. And you'll need the usual supplies like a fan for ventilation, white cardstock for catching excess ink, a lint roller to prepare your surface, and heat resistant tape to keep everything in place during pressing. Speaking of pressing, I'm using a Cricut Easy Press, but you can also use any flat heat press that reaches the temperature you need. They're not all the same though, so I have information for different press types in my sublimation cookbook, which you can find at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation cookbook. Now using a pressing surface inside a garment is usually optional, but I found this set of pressing pillows to be really helpful for these sweatshirts. There are several sizes, so you can use the one that fits each design area best. They help elevate each area away from seams that could mess with your transfer and protect any other designs that you've already sublimated. I've also seen some sublimation crafters using this arm shaper, so I'll show you how it works in this video as well. But I'll show you a super simple method that actually worked much better for me on the sleeves. One more optional item that I found helpful is the back placement guide from my free t-shirt guides project, which you can find over at jennifermaker.com 433. It's really easy to make this with a cutting machine, which I'll show you how to do over on that page, but you can also make one by hand. It helps to get your back design placed perfectly. So are you ready to sublimate some hoodies? Let me show you where to get the free files and then we'll get started. Step one, get my free sublimation hoodie designs. First, download my designs at jennifermaker.com 561. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 561 and click the link to download the designs. There are four large sleeping baby animal designs that I think look really nice on the back and matching small designs for the front of your hoodie. 
There's a cute fox, an adorable sloth, a really, really sleepy rabbit, and tiny little mouse. Plus, there are three designs to go on the hoodie's arm. Happy dreaming. Zzz, I don't even know how we pronounce that. A whole bunch of Z's, you know, sleeping. <laughs> and chase your dreams. Aren't these cute? I used an AI art generator to create the designs, then made them even cuter with image editing software. If you want to learn more about the process of creating AI art, check out my workshop on creating and using AI art in your crafts ethically at jennifermaker.com slash AI dash art. Step two, prepare and print your designs. Use the Google Chrome browser to open a new Google Docs page. This is completely free. And this is my favorite ways to prepare and print sublimation designs, especially because it's free and it's accessible to pretty much everybody. To find it, go to docs.google.com. Click insert in the top menu, then select image and upload from computer. Then pick the PNG design that you want to use. I'll add the sloth for the back of a hoodie. And there it is. I want to make it eight and a quarter inches wide, and that looks pretty small. To check the design's current dimensions, click image options at the top, then size and rotation in the new panel. So the design is six and a half inches right now, and these blue marks in the top are a hint as to why. See how the design's side edges line up with them? They are the left and right indent markers, and they indicate where the margins are, or the white unused space left between the design and the paper's edges. But we need that space to print the PNG at the correct size. Back in the top menu, click File and then Page Setup. There are the margins. Change all four margins to zero and click OK. Now the design jumps to the upper corner because without the large margins, we can print on the entire page. In the image options panel under size, make sure the lock aspect ratio is checked to maintain the proportions. Then change the width to eight and a quarter inches and hit your return or enter key on your keyboard to automatically change the height too. Now it's the right size. The printed image will be easier to use if the blank space is more even around it, though. Now, you can't just drag the design to the center. Instead, you'll need to do something special. All right, so look below at the icons. See the icons below the design? These control how the image interacts with the text on the page, even when there isn't any text there. So click on the second icon from the left, which means wrap text. Now you can move the image anywhere on your page. I centered mine so it won't get cut off at the curved edges. There, now it's the right size and centered. If you're making a design to go on the front of a sweatshirt, use these same steps but make it three and a half inches wide. How cute! <laughs> If you're making either the Happy Dreams or Chase Your Dreams design to go on the arm, resize it to nine and a half inches tall. And if you're making the Z design to go on the arm, resize it to 10 and a half inches tall. Then you're ready to print. Google Docs auto saves. Give your document a name so it's easier to find. Then go to the file menu and choose print and then select your sublimation printer under destination. Click the arrow beside more settings and select print using system dialog. Now the printing detail screen varies by printer and operating system. And then you'll want to choose a material like premium matte paper. And then be sure to select the highest or best quality print option. Just make sure that you mirror the print. So you may need to flip it or something like that. Look for the right language to mirror your print. Let the printed design sit to dry. The colors will be more vibrant after pressing. Remember, with sublimation, it always, the ink always shows up a little faded, and then it all comes to life after we press it. So if it looks faded, don't worry. Now find the design center by carefully folding the sides together and pinching the top and bottom edges until you get close to the ink. Don't crease the image itself. Cut the extra paper away from the design, leaving the top and bottom creases. 
The paper's edge can leave an indent during pressing, so tearing or feathering really helps here. But be careful when you get close to the design, you wouldn't want to tear it off. Step three, prepare and sublimate the hoodie. Remember, always open a window and or turn on a fan before sublimating to help improve your ventilation. Now set your heat press to the correct temperature and time. According to my sublimation cookbook, the Cricut Easy Press needs to be set at 385 degrees Fahrenheit or 196 degrees Celsius for 40 seconds for polyester fabric like this. If you want to test out your design's colors and size, as well as your pressing settings before sublimating onto a hoodie, you can use some plain white polyester fabric as a test. Just print your design, then press it using the steps below or whatever instructions you're following for your press. Sublimate the back of the hoodie. To find the back center, Fold the hoodie in half vertically and match up the shoulder seams to make sure the sides are even. Lightly press the folded hoodie for approximately 10 seconds to help set the center line. This also removes excess moisture from the material and smooths out any extra wrinkles, so it's important to do. Lay the hoodie flat face down. Lift the hood up so it's out of the way and so you can see the neckline well. Put a piece of white cardstock on top of a large pressing pillow, then put them inside the sweatshirt roughly where your design will go. Lint roll the hoodie to get rid of any dust or debris that will interfere with the transfer. Now if you've made my t-shirt back ruler, set it so the design is on the crease and the top edge touches the neckline. Then place the design face down and line up the creases with those on the sweatshirt. Start with the design's top edge about 5 inches down from the neckline. Carefully pull the hood down to see if the design is mostly or completely visible. You don't want it being obstructed by the hood, do you? If the design is too obscured, gently pull it straight down until it looks better. About 6 inches from the neck seam worked best for me. Adjust the pressing pillow and paper inside if the design has moved off of them. Remove the ruler, then use heat-resistant tape to secure all four sides of the paper to the sweatshirt. Move the design section to your pressing area, making sure it's smooth. Place a piece of white butcher paper on top of the hoodie and tape design to protect the press from any extra ink. And then press the hoodie for 40 seconds at the correct temperature. Again, I press mine with my Cricut Easy Press at 385 degrees Fahrenheit or 196 degrees Celsius. Once the time is up, remove the butcher paper and let the design sit for at least 10 seconds to help prevent any blurring or ghosting, which can happen if you remove the sheet too quickly. And then remove the taped sheet from the hoodie and the pressing pad or cardstock from inside. The back of your hoodie is now ready. Sublimate the front of your hoodie. Since the front of the hoodie is small and we have a lot of seams to work around, prepping it on your pressing area is easier than moving it into position. Lay the hoodie flat so the front is visible. This is where you can see the standard style hoodie has really helpful seams, as long as you keep them aligned and out of the way during pressing. I'm using a pretty large pressing pillow to protect the design on the back from any extra heat, while bringing the pressing area higher than the seams. Put a piece of white cardstock on top of the pressing pillow and put them inside the sweatshirt under the design area. I'm decorating the upper left chest area. Make sure the seams are still aligned, but not on the pressing area because they'll make your surface bumpy. Lightly press the hoodie for 10 seconds to help remove excess moisture and any wrinkles. Plus, you can be sure the seams are out of the way. Lint roll the material to get rid of any debris, and we'll use a ruler and the seams to get the small design's placement right. Look through the design from the back and eyeball the center. This is where the seams are so helpful. A design like this looks nice if the center is about five and a half inches in from the arm seam and down from the shoulder's top edge. Use a normal ruler to find where these lines intersect. 
Of course, you can experiment with different placements, especially if you're using a totally different sweatshirt than I am. Once you've found the spot on the hoodie, place your design face down so its center matches. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will look cute. And can you really tell if a design is a half an inch off when someone's wearing it? No, you can't. So don't worry too much. You do want the design straight though. So compare the top and bottom creases of the design to the arm seam, which should have a section that's pretty straight. Gently rotate the design if it looks like the creases are straight up and down. Make sure the pressing pillow and cardstock inside the hoodie are directly below the design and that your press won't be over the back design without the pillow as a buffer. Tape the edges of the design down with heat resistant tape. Now place a fresh piece of white butcher paper on top of the hoodie and tape design to catch any extra ink. Press the hoodie for 40 seconds at the right temperature and with light pressure. When the time is up, remove the butcher paper and let the design sit for at least 10 seconds to help prevent any blurring. Now remove the taped sheet from the hoodie and the pressing pillow and cardstock from inside the hoodie. And the front of your hoodie is now done. Sublimate the sleeve of the hoodie. Find the sleeve center by pinching the upper seam in the middle of the shoulder and folding it in half vertically, making sure the sides are even. Put the sleeve on your pressing area and lightly press the folded sleeve for 10 seconds to help set the center line and to remove any moisture. Pull the sleeve sides apart so the crease runs down the middle of it with flat material on either side. Now I did try a sleeve form like I've seen other crafters use, but honestly I didn't love wrangling it into the sleeve. Plus it was so firm that the sleeve didn't compress well during pressing so I don't recommend this for sublimating. Most pressing pillows won't fit inside the sleeve, but the set I found has a five by 15 inch one that works well for adult size hoodies. If you use a pressing pillow, it's important to get both layers as really smooth as possible to avoid bumps during pressing. And try to keep the design in a section that doesn't need to stretch different amounts. For example, if we push the pillow all the way down to the wrist, that tapered section will stretch a little while the upper section doesn't. That can make our transfer inconsistent once the fabric relaxes. So further from the cuff is best. And if you don't have a pressing pillow to fit in the sleeve or you're using a smaller hoodie, I actually got great results by folding a piece of 12 by 12 inch cardstock in half and putting that inside. Make sure the layers and cardstock or pillow are smooth. And then lint roll the material like you always do to make sure there's no dust or pet hairs or anything like that. Then look at your design and find its beginning, like Chase for this one. Make sure that the edge is at the shoulder so your message reads correctly from the shoulder down, like a book spine. Okay, so you want to make sure the start of your letter, your word, your phrase, whatever, starts at the shoulder. Place the printed image face down on the sleeve, making sure to line up the creased edges with the center line pressed on the fabric. I put the design's top at three and a half inches from the shoulder seam. This way the design is still pretty visible if the sleeve gets pushed up the arm. Of course, you can play with the position and adjust the cardstock or other protective item inside the sleeve to make sure it's directly below the design. Now tape all four edges of the design down with heat resistant tape and place a piece of butcher paper on top of the sleeve and tape design to protect your equipment from any extra ink. Press the sleeve for 40 seconds with light pressure at 385 degrees Fahrenheit. When the time is up, let the design sit for about 10 seconds or more to help prevent any blurring. Now remove the tape sheet from the hoodie and the pressing pad or cardstock from inside the sleeve. And now the sleeve of your hoodie is done. Step four, show it off. And here is our adorable hoodie with designs on the back, the front, and the sleeve.
Didn't these turn out great? They'd make such cute gifts, especially if your favorite animal happens to be in my favorite designs here. But I'd love to see you create your own. Remember, I have a whole workshop on how to create these with AI art design, which is how we've made these. And you can get information on that over at jennifermaker.com slash AI art. And don't forget that you can experiment with different design placements now that you know how to use the seams to your advantage. I really like this placement with text above the pocket. Caring for these sublimated hoodies is easy because the ink dyes the fibers instead of just sitting on top of them like iron on vinyl would. So wait at least a day for everything to be set and then turn it inside out and wash it with cold or warm water and mild detergent. Then hang it to dry or tumble it with low heat. So if you love this project as much as I did and want to learn more about sublimation, come check out my sublimation startup mini course at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I walk you through all the basics from setting up a sublimation printer with the right ink to which tools are helpful for beginners. I also show you how to use free software to print designs and share all of my tips on getting the best results with each press. Not to mention, I've got tons of ideas and designs for projects you can sublimate. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace without any pressure. I also have a Facebook group just for sublimation, which is a great way to see all of the fun that you can have with it and all of the amazing things you can make. Whether you're new to sublimation or not, come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. I'd love to have you come ask questions, share ideas, and get inspired. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.